So over the past few lessons we've been looking at ethnic inequality and how there can be disparities between different ethnic groups in terms of their workplace, education, the media and elsewhere. But now we're going to turn our attention to a different uh, category of people and look at discrimination and inequalities based on age. So with the social inequality module we need to remember that there's two sides to our understanding of the module and, and in terms of the 20 mark and the 40 mark question. First we need to understand evidence of the area of inequality uh, and then we go on to explain it. So before we move on to explanations of age inequality we first need to go into evidence of age inequality. Where does it, is, where does it exist? Where are some areas where there are differing perceptions or realities for different age groups? Now, as you should probably be aware by now, there are, in terms of the structure for the 20 mark question, where, where most of this is going to be, you're going to need to make sure that you focus on three areas of inequality. The ones that I'm going to go through today and the ones that I recommend that you go over, and, and this is all in your course pack as well, are the media, crime, and the workplace. Now. Ordinarily, you'd probably need to know roughly kind of two studies for each of those areas for each age group. But I've just, rather than kind of go through that many studies, which would take a, a lot longer, I've chosen one from each age group and how they suffer inequality in those areas. So I recommend you go over your course pack and make sure that you know a couple for, for each age group. But I'm just going to give you kind of the broad overview um, rather than kind of go in depth for each one because with inequality as well you can transfer across studies from other areas um, most notably youth subcultures for instance uh, and you can use a lot of the evidence from there so there's no point in me kind of going through comprehensively every single study so I've chosen a study from each age group for each area just to illustrate where these inequalities lie the media is one of the main areas in which there's inequality between the different age groups. We can see how there are differing portrayals of both the young and the old in many different contexts. In terms of the elderly, we can go back to a study that we've already looked at. Biggs argues that in sitcoms, but in the media more generally as well, older people tend to be generally viewed in a negative light. They are either portrayed as weak, feeble and unable to do things for themselves. They may appear a bit bumbling or even a bit stupid at times. But then on the other hand, they can often be portrayed as cranky, irritable and generally unlikable people. Do you need any help, Major? <laughs> um. We haven't got any this week, Major. <laughs> no German staying this week, Major. May I? <laughs> Shoot him, Volta. Is Major? Hmm? Not not legal, actually, anymore. Murder. But uh, animals, Volta. Oh yes, yes. Still, forgive and forget, eh? Forget. <laughs> well, pretend we do. Yes, but they spread disease, Volta. He was sitting there on that table eating the nuts, if you please. He's really gone this time. <laughs> Death stalks you at every turn! Grandpa? Well, it does! Ah! Death! There it is! Death! It's only Maggie! <laughs> oh, yeah! You know, at my age, the mind starts playing tricks! So, ah! Death! I think I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's dead? <laughs> well, you'd think it's a pretty safe bet, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, it's a bit parky in there at the best of times. <laughs> How's it supposed to have kept warm? Rub two fish fingers together to start a fire? <laughs> How long do you think it had been in there? I don't know, I'll look for its sell-by date. <laughs> but then, if we look at the youth, similar arguments can be made about their portrayal in the media. There are a couple of studies which focus on how negative the portrayal of youths is in the media. But one in particular comes from Wayne, who did a study into news channels. He looked at 2,130 news channels 
and found that of the 286 studies that were centred on young people, 83% were focusing on them as criminal. So he concludes that the media has this stereotype of young people as being criminal or deviant. And we can also see this if we look back at the Youth Subcultures module, where Cohen, who did the study on the mods and rockers in the 1960s, argues that it tends to be young people who are focused on as the attention of a moral panic. So it's important to remember that the media is one of the key agents of socialisation. And so any perceptions that can be pushed in the media of different age groups can severely impact your overall life chances, how people view you, the amount of status that you're given in society, whether or not you are likely to be given a job or be associated with, the amount of social or cultural capital that you acquire. All of this is attached in many ways to your portrayal in the media. Although the argument can be made it's just creative license or it's just a bit harmless, on the other hand, there, there is the view that these perceptions in the media will alter our norms and values and our overall way that we see the world. We, as people, like to put people in categories, and you could argue that those categories can be, in many ways, guided by the media. So now let's look at the workplace and how age can be a determining factor in your life chances in this area. One study comes from Ray, who looks at the inequality faced in the workplace by the old. He argues that younger people are far more likely to obtain employment against an older applicant, despite the fact that it has been proven in a few studies that young people are actually no better at their jobs than older people. So we can infer that there is some kind of stereotyping going on at the workplace level, where employers are favouring younger people over their older counterparts. But that's not to say that there isn't inequality in the workplace that's suffered by the young. A study from Willis finds that unemployment rates are highest amongst 16 to 24 year olds, a category we normally associate with the youth. This prevents young people from taking what are stereotypically called adult roles. So this really hinders them in being unable to plan for the future and take on family roles. As a result, many become bored, demoralised, many even drop out of the workplace entirely. This can cause a great deal of suffering when you consider the fact that they are still expected to take up adult roles, despite the fact that the economy is structured in a way which does not necessarily allow them to take up those adult roles. So with the workplace, we should remember just how far-reaching that impact can be on someone's life chances. We've looked at before, especially with class inequality, how many areas of your life can be touched from your level of income or your level of um, status in the workplace. So this is a very um, central aspect to understanding the inequality between different age groups. But again, there are actually kind of more specific legal aspects to the inequality between the different age groups. I mean, if you look at minimum wage laws, they almost set in stone an inequality between different age groups. Why is it that the minimum wage is different between 18-year-olds and 16-year-olds for doing the same work? It seems kind of rather arbitrary, and it's one specific example of an inequality between different age groups. So finally, let's look at the area of crime. And once again, we can see some disparities in the way that age groups both are viewed by the criminal justice system, but also how they experience crime. First, let's take those of an older age group. Vincent found that whilst over 45 year olds are less likely to be a victim of crime, they are far more likely to suffer harm when they do um, become a victim of crime. For example, they may be more likely to be seriously assaulted, suffer grievous bodily harm. They're also more likely to be assaulted with a weapon and need more time off work when they suffer injuries as a result of their crime. So more generally, we can probably infer that it tends to be older people that suffer more serious crimes than the more minor, material-based crimes that more younger people might suffer. And when we look at younger people and how they suffer inequality in crime, 
This is far more focused generally on how they experience the criminal justice system. For example, if we look at a study from Tim Newburn, he argues that it tends to be younger people which are disproportionately given sanctions by the police when they are stopped for a crime. Older people tend to get very low level sanctions like cautions. They are far more likely to be given cautions than younger people who tend to be given far more serious reprimands. Newburn argues that this plays a very large role in almost funneling young people into the criminal justice system. He would generally argue that this makes them more likely to commit crime, not necessarily less. So the inequality in crime is very different between the different age groups. For the young, uh, especially kind of those under around kind of say 22, 23, the inequality is faced with the way that they're treated by the criminal justice system. Um, it tends to be that the younger you are, the more likely you are to commit crime. But you could argue that there is an element of stereotyping and police bias or some kind of injustice or discrimination going on there, specifically geared against the young. Um, it tends to be that the young are generally labelled um, as kind of the ideal criminal. Um, and when I say ideal criminal, I mean that they are almost like, if you pictured a criminal in your head, the likelihood is you'll picture a younger person. Um, and Becker, um, kind of one of the biggest labelling theorists, would argue that that does tend to contribute to viewing younger people as more likely to be criminal. And then that produces a lot of this higher crime rate amongst the young. But when you look at the older people, uh, kind of middle-aged and above, it tends to be that the inequality that they suffer in crime is more on a victimhood basis. Um, it's more that they experience more severe and more serious crimes than, say, the young. Mostly because, you know, you could argue it's that the older you are, the more likely you are to live in a kind of wealthier, safer, more secure area. And so that tends to mean that you're less likely to suffer from a lot of the kind of petty and, and more material crimes, which basically only leaves you open to um, the more serious ones that tend to be often committed by people that you know. Whereas obviously the young will live in less well-off areas where material crime is quite common. So in terms of final thoughts for this, um, this is going to be a, a shorter video than you're normally used to simply because it's just evidence. Um, there's no need to evaluate um, the evidence because this is kind of more for those 20 markers where there's no need to evaluate them. I'm just covering where the age inequality and where the disparities lie so that as we move forward we should be able to um, kind of explain and know what we're explaining. Um, now uh, you should by now have your Weberian essays back, your first 40 markers. Generally I, I, was, I was very impressed that a few of them um, were well above what you kind of were getting before we closed. So that's that's really encouraging. Um, so yeah, once again, just just keep it up because I'm really appreciating the amount of work that I'm seeing in some of these essays. They're, they're just phenomenal, really, some of them. Um, so yeah, keep that up. Um, I maybe have like some like three or four left to mark. Um, I'm going to say today, but by today, I mean like Monday when you'll be seeing this. Um, yeah, so I'll see you on Wednesday where we'll go through some explanations.